Welcome! We are just days away from the May the 4th celebration, so in order to celebrate, we are going to be looking back at the fans that helped make the Star Wars universe that much more special. We're going to be talking about fan films, so stay tuned! Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's Jedi Alliance! Welcome everybody to the celebration of the greatest saga ever told, Jedi Alliance. Uh, I am one of your hosts, the internet's Mark B. Donica. Find me on Twitter at Mark B. Donica. Joined as always by uh, my Ubi Scooby Dooby Banooby. Sure. Uh, Mr. John Roca. I'll take that. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm, I'm so excited for this episode. Yeah. Yeah, and don't look at me angry anymore. I, you know what? I'm just going to be, it's all going to be subtext. I'm going to be subtweeting you in my brain. And, and so anytime there's just a look of me just quietly looking at you, feel the rage. Yes, and everybody yes. at home, feel the rage because there's nothing but animosity between the two of us. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. I'm looking forward to this. When you proposed this as a subject last week, I was like, oh, heck yeah. It's been a while since I've seen some of these Star Wars fans films. So I'm so excited. I was so excited to have to watch them again so that we can talk about them. Some of them should have been left in the past. Uh, well. There were some, some rough them. ones, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about the history and concept and place in history of Star Wars fan films going all the way back to 1978 right. with Hardware Wars and all the way up to 2016 with Darth Maul Apprentice. Yeah. Which, that that's what initially brought this on. Yeah. The fans were like, why haven't you talked about Apprentice? And like, well, there's not, we don't have like a good 10, 15 minute portion of time to talk about yeah. it. Let's make a show about it. So, right uh, why don't we get straight into the show with news from the Holland, 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 Holland. It's very. It's very spacious. Yeah, I like that. Yes, it's yeah. Yeah. Um, So we got a couple of stories. Uh, our first story, we got an introduction to our main characters for the uh, Freemaker Adventures, the yeah. Lego Star Wars series that's going to be on Disney XD. We have Rowan, young Rowan, uh, yeah. who is the young boy on the top left there. Yeah. Cordy, who is, I can't, there she is, top right. Yeah. And Xander, bottom right. And Roger, the decommissioned battle droid from right. the Clone War era. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this, the, the series, this is going to take place in between episodes five and six of the Star Wars universe. Yeah, right. Um, it, it is not declared whether this is canon or not. Lego usually is sort of a, uh, a free-moving area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be debuting June 20th. We got to meet a little bit. We got to know a little bit more about our main characters. I, well, first of all, what, what did you think of it? I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Everything Lego touches with Star Wars, for me, I can't stop being a fan of. Like, I, every time I think they've mined the well or they've gone down as far as they can go, they create something like this, which mm -hmm. is an entirely whole new family, but in a time where we haven't seen a lot of stuff about, uh, about a lot of tales or a lot of stuff going on during that time. So it's fun for them to explore this. They're going to introduce new characters, new villains, mm -hmm. new stuff. Like, so for new me, Jedi. New Jedi, which, which is interesting. Right. So you never know. Yes, like you just said, Mark. It may not be canon, but that doesn't mean it can't be canon. Yeah. So that's what I enjoy. This I'm so excited, and it's it's a great voice cast with a bunch of actors I've seen before and heard before, especially uh, Vanessa Lenji, who I'm a huge fan of. And the Roger idea is just brilliant. Yes, a battle droid. That I mean, just in the preview, you can see when he runs from the Jedi, it's hilarious. So, and it's it's great that we're going to be getting a little bit more of a characterization. Of a battle droid, yes. instead of just the Jedi, we gotta get out of here. Right. You know, they, I mean that's how they were programmed, but now we get to, we get to see a little bit more fun in that area, yeah. and maybe bring a little bit more levity back to the prequels, yeah. which which I think the the universe needs. <laughs> um, oh, and Clone Wars, it's a nice Clone and, Wars, yeah, and it's a Clone right? Wars nod. It's a way to kind of slide it in there, yeah. So maybe we can, maybe he has a past that can connect to Clone Wars, yeah. and then it's kind of Backstreet's canon, yeah. as opposed to InSync canon. Yeah, um, nice. Our, nice. That was bad. That was Boom. bad. Um, we're going to be going back to the world of Lego in just a second, but before we do, uh, the Star Wars land design for Disneyland oh, yeah, yeah has changed. It was a, a keen-eyed Disney blogger, and trust me, there are many of them, <laughs> uh, noticed this new uh, piece of concept art that was released re uh, uh, recently. Yeah. And so so here's the thing. The, th the thing that Walt introduced with Disneyland is he didn't want you to be in a part of the park and look around and go, that doesn't look right. Yeah. So, like, in New Orleans Square, you can't look over and see Tomorrowland. Yeah. In Fantasyland, you can't see Space Mountain. You can't see 
big Thunder Mountain, you can't see. The, the, so you're not. The sight lines are very specific. Yep. And with the initial. Uh, the initial designs that they had for it, it was this huge redwoody, foresty mm -hmm. sort of design, and now they've changed it to a little bit more of a familiar uh, desert esque type landscape. Yeah. So it's still a new planet. It's still a, a, a trade area where a lot of different cultures mm -hmm. coincide. But the back mountain range looks kind of like Big Thunder Mountain. Yeah, it's and it's also uh, there's more concrete structures in this in mm -hmm. this uh, in this iteration and so uh, for me I think it works um, in if they're if they're doing that for the sightline issues I think it's brilliant mm -hmm. because one of the great things about the Orlando parks is that every separate land you can legitimately lose yourself in that land. They have the space. Yeah, they have the space and that's what unfortunately the Hollywood parks sometimes suffer from because they don't have as much space mm -hmm. like for example the Harry Potter park which I work at at times you can see the Simpsons. Yeah. And so it just it does kind of ruin it just a little bit. Not enough because it's still they're amazingly well detailed and beautiful experiences within the parks. But with Orlando, you really can get lost inside the park. And this looks like it's completely uh completely engrossing. And with the Falcon right there in the middle, it's like a touchstone for you as a visitor to know where you're going in that land. And with a high I wonder <clears throat> how long the line I, I mean, going back to, to Harry Potter, I yeah. could equate it to the wand line for getting a chance to sit in the cockpit of the Millennium right, Falcon. Right, That's I probably going to be, oh, right, it's cool, but I get to pilot the Millennium Falcon? Yeah. Awesome. I yeah. will stand in however long of a line I'll pay, however much that I can yeah. in order to do that. It's a great point you bring up because uh, we were told during orientation about uh, the Orlando line, when it opened, it was nine hours to get into the actual park and then to get into Harry Potter. It was another five or six. Is this the first opening? The first this, opening. Okay. The first opening. And so wow. there were people who came for the day and never got into Harry Potter and were only there for the day. So all they did was stand in line with the hopes that they might get in. So this is wow. certainly in play here. You know? And it, this being in the back corner of the park. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, uh, it's, it's going to be madness. The lines are going to be it all really the way is. out the door. Um, they're going to go all the way from the park. It's it's going to be a madhouse, right? Uh, but it's going to be. I mean, it's Star Wars. But that design makes it feel like it's going to be so worth it, mm -hmm. you know. And just the description of how and and actually seeing something out of blue sky as yeah. a, like that is a design. That's yeah. not hey, here's what we're thinking. It's no, that's that's what it's going to be. Yeah, you're going to be walking down there. Like the next step, they kind of already have in the construction zone. You can do like a little VR tour. Yeah. Oh, uh, cool. If you have like Google Cardboard. Yeah. So if. If they bring this to like a 3D model, like they do usually for design, mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to walk around in it before the, it's even open, like yeah. years before it's even open. That would be awesome. Boom, that would be really cool. I wish they could do a thing where they could actually fly the vehicles above you as you're mm. out of The Force Awakens. That would be know? so cool. Right? Okay. <laughs> there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of coolness happening. Yes. Speaking of May the 4th, there are going to be some fun things that you can do, whether locally uh, or destinationally. Uh, if you're in the the Los Angeles Parks area, like we we're, were just talking about, Disneyland and Disney World are going to be releasing, uh, and this is our next story, Yeah, uh, they're going to be releasing a Rogue One shirt. It is the yeah. first piece of Rogue One merchandise. It's just got the logo on it, similar to how the Force Awakens one they had at Celebration was yeah. just the Force Awakens. But all of the proceeds are going to Force for Change. So I'm like... I let my past lapse because it's way too expensive, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking of going up and buying a shirt because they're ha they have them at the outside of the parks. Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking about it just because one, it's one shirt, and yeah. two, force for change. Yeah, th it's a great concept, great idea, and and I love how Star Wars keeps coming back to Force for Change. It's not something that they did just to promote their movie. No. It's something they legitimately uh, uh, support and 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 want to be a part of and want to keep advancing and keep expanding. And so I think it's great. And Rogue One's an interesting choice because it seems like a bunch of mercenaries and, you know, bounty hunters. <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily lend itself to, at least from the first trailer, to be the same kind of kind of like, you know, kind of almost kid-oriented. Yeah, feel-good kind of kid-oriented or at least young adult-oriented film. However... It's Star Wars, and people love everything Star Wars, and it's such a great design. I wish there was something. I wish they'd something have, more than a logo. Yeah, for a T-shirt like that, I just wish something. If you're going to give it to charity, I want a design that's even more, just more interesting and more than just uh, the standard stuff. So that's, but that's nitpicking, right? Only mm -hmm. because I would like something new to wear around that isn't just block letters and stuff of that nature. But still, it's a great cause. It's a great idea, and I think it's awesome they're doing it, man. And I will say this: the the ever since Disney bought Star Wars, every May the Fourth, they had. 
a shirt that was available that day yeah. themed to, but it was like, well, no, the first year had Disney characters dressed up as Star Wars, mm-hmm. and then they just went to Star Wars characters, and those shirts never went anywhere. Oh, so yeah, now, okay. if you if you go just straight up logo, yeah, and say, hey, it's, it's going to charity, people buy it. People are going to go out yeah, and buy it because yeah. it's like it's you know point. what, I I wasn't thinking about it, but I will go. Yeah, um, and I think this is. Uh, ha- adding charity is the perfect charity on top. Boo. And I had to put it in there. I even apologized in the notes. Um, so going on from there, we have our three new Lego Force Awakens shorts. Yeah. Um, one following Han and Chewie, uh, the trouble with Rathtars. One in Maz Kanata's bar where everybody's looking for Han Solo. Yeah. And one about Rey and Ankar Plutt. Uh, and Ankar trying to steal Rey's speeder and how important it is to her as well, I guess her only companion, yeah. not even that isn't even sentient. But it's about four minutes. Each each are about four minutes yeah. long, four and minutes. they do exactly what you said earlier on when we were talking about uh, the Freemaker Adventures. Yeah. Is Lego Lego keeps you in the universe, mm-hmm. lets you have your fun. And then it's like, okay, come back when you want. Yeah, yeah. I watched all of these, and they're so good. If you haven't watched them, go to your computer after you're done <laughs> listening to us and watching our show and watch them. Literally, it's 15 minutes of your time to watch all of them. And they're, and on, that, the, they're on the Toys R Us YouTube. They're, yeah, Toys mm-hmm. R Us YouTube. That's where you can find them. And they're so much fun. And just just like Droid Tales, they do a great job of, of inhabiting the universe, making the jokes that work. And they're not stupid jokes. They're jokes that are really fun to watch. And they enhance the characters just that little bit more. And then you see the adventures that they they go through and so I'm just such a fan of this stuff Lego Lego whoever's working on the Lego stuff that entire team from the writers to the creators need to be commended uh, all the time because it's very difficult to walk into a saga like this and try to make jokes about it and make it work and I think they do a great job of it which means they're probably editing and editing and editing and going through a lot of story sessions to make sure they get it right just for a four minute short mm-hmm. that anyone can see no one's paying to see you can no. watch it for free on YouTube and what's great the the Uncar plot Ray one so Great. So much fun. Unkar Plot being obsessed with his uh, pa- plant named Kevin, I think. Is his a cactus. cactus. Yeah, named Kevin and all of that. He's named and- your cactus. <laughs> like, stop. And great voice work by the people they got. Great mm-hmm. voice matching work. So amazing and stuff. There was there's a uh, a fun cameo in the uh, in the one that takes place in Maz Kanata's bar. Oh yes. Just very make fun sure cameo. To, make sure to stay through till the end. Uh, if if you haven't watched it yet, uh, I hope that's a good indicator moving forward. It's weird because <laughs> these aren't. These aren't technically Ooh, that's a canon, very good point. But yeah. a, a character, a a not a, not a legacy character, a but, smooth character. One all right, say. if you want to just if you just want to throw, I out, mean, just bury the lead. Um, <laughs> a character from the original trilogy that hasn't shown up in the yeah. new trilogy yet. Uh, yet appears, and we don't know if it's like, well, is this is this real? Because yeah. it it's. It's bizarre. Yeah. It's really bizarre, and they're all kind of connected in a weird way because all of the bounty hunters end up uh, in a different uh, planet. It, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Go yeah. check them out. Um, so why don't we get into our main topic of discussion, and that is done. fan film fanfare. Yeah. Uh, start. Wow. Look at that evolution. Oof. We're going from original trilogy back in 1978 with Hardware Wars, uh, Troops uh, in 1999, <laughs> which essentially reawakened the genre yeah um and then uh this year's this past year's darth maul apprentice which yeah. wow so there there's a very strange relationship between fans of star wars and star wars and yeah. fan films are that gray area of well how much are you are you making fun of it how much is this reverence? Like, yeah. is, are you poking fun at some of the inconsistencies? What, I mean, Thumb Wars, I mean, that, yeah. the whole Thumb Saga <laughs> is, is just poking fun at, so at a lot of different things. So great. Um, Chad Vader was a good series. Oh, Chad Vader's fantastic. Yeah, and Matt Sloan, love Matt Sloan, yeah. is, for the most part, the new voice of, of Darth Vader. Wow. Because of Chad Vader. Wow. Yeah, like on uh, Star Tours. Yeah. That's it. That's Matt Sloan. That's awesome. Anytime, most times it's not James Earl Jones, it's Matt Sloan. Huh. That's great. You never know. Nope. You just, never just know. Just like those guys that built the R2-D2 droids exactly. working on The Force Awakens. Exactly. Oh, wow. That's amazing. You never know. Because yeah. um, 
so we have a, a couple listed here just as weird uh yeah like there's some comedic there's some tribute yeah uh if you have time like imps is an interesting watch i there's a lot of cg involved that might take you out of it it supposedly was a sequel to troops and then oh i mean to hardware wars i think and then it, they took it and it just, was supposed to be a, it was supposed to be a sequel and then they took it and went to a way darker place where hardware wars wasn't going to go so they kind of hardware wars like signed off on it and said nope we're not we're not getting involved in this at all because some of the actors i think from hardware wars are involved in it or had a small parts in it and stuff of that nature so it's interesting uh but then i think it's they weird. kind of they kind of took it off um but rebel scum is an interesting one to watch, which is a five-minute uh, one. If you haven't watched that, um, it, it's just a, a downed rebel pilot that g- comes upon a downed uh, snow speeder pilot, imperial pilot, and after uh, the Battle trooper, of Hoth. after the Battle of Hoth, snow or trooper. around the Battle of Hoth. Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels like the planet of Hoth, mm-hmm. yeah, with the adats and everything like that. So you see that, and then you see what he does to survive, and it's so well done with hardly any dialogue. And I think that's what's great about these. A lot of these fan ones are done with almost no dialogue. I mean, even uh, uh, the Apprentice one, Darth mm-hmm. Maul Apprentice, which is well worth 20 minutes of your time, uh, is done without almost any dialogue other than the Emperor and then the occasional Jedi interaction. But Maul only says a few words throughout the whole thing. Doesn't need to. Doesn't need to, exactly. And it's once again, it's another example of how much people love this character and why he's coming back now in season three of Rebels. And this is so well done. I mean, uh, so if you're looking to nitpick, you can talk about character development and how the changes or whatever, but the effort is what you respect and the graphics and the story and their ability to dress in World costume building. appropriate yes very it, much it, so. it doesn't it didn't feel phoned in nope like that that was one that made me go back and actually go well how many of these actually are good yeah how many of these look like um like a, a, a the the graphics don't necessarily hold up yeah. because they don't have the budget and um Surprisingly, a lot of them. But uh, that's that's not to say that the passion isn't there. Like, no, that's, of course that's not. That's not what we're saying at all. We're no, not trying no. to be like, you should have a budget. Like, no, yeah. not, none of that business. Because starting at the very beginning, Hardware Wars. If you haven't yeah. seen Hardware Wars, you got to make it through it. It's, uh, it's 13 minutes of it's, special edition. <laughs> it's, it blew me away. Because yeah. this was back at a time where parody... I mean, parody's been a thing forever. Right. And that's one of the only areas that Star Wars back in the day was like, yeah, you can only do parody movies and we're cool with that. Yeah. Um, but the weirdest thing about this is the the voiceover. Did the voiceover sound familiar to you? Yes, of course. Because that is Ex Atencio, yeah. who is the voiceover artist that does most of the Disney work. Yeah. Disney Parks, um, if you've been on the Haunted Mansion, uh, or um, he's also the the... Skull and Crossbones in, in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, just unbelievable uh, candor. He also did the voiceover for the original Star Wars movie, yep. the, for the trailer. So, so the, the it was fact, a perfect choice. The fact that you got that yeah. entire breadth of work, like, hey, you are you need work. Come mm-hmm. on. Want to do something fun? Sure. Yeah. And it's, it's bizarre. Well, it's amazing. The Hardware Wars is amazing because the time it came out, is right after New Hope. Right after. So it's very much a joke on the New Hope, but in a good way, very funny way. Uh, the, the, the irony is there's hardly any hardware in it. It's a lot of kitchen utensils, kitchen <laughs> appliances. So to me, I thought that was funny. Uh, the second part, the the thing that Vader, you watch it, Vader, you, nobody can understand Vader, which I thought was brilliant. But if you have to look at it as a time capsule, right? Back in the 70s, these are the kinds of jokes that work because, yeah, people didn't know as much about Vader. People didn't know as much about all this kind of jazz. But what's so great about this film is that it caught on. It was only made for $8,000. It is made to this point a million dollars on its own. Has just something thrown together, and these actors, blowing. these actors hardly ever worked again. Like I went through their resumes, hardly ever worked again. This, this is what they're known for, but they still go to conventions and stuff. It's fascinating. It's it's a passion project. Yes, and <laughs> like you say, we we didn't weren't as familiar with these characters, and seeing how just plucky Luke was yes. was just really unfortunate. Um, like jeepers, yeah. golly gosh! Like, dude, you need to peel it back a bit. It's it's hard looking at it from that lens. Yeah, yeah. Because these days, that's a YouTube video. Oh yeah. You know, oh, like, I mean, and to think of it as in that prism, along with 
troops yeah. along with and troops, troops I think has aged wonderfully it's be- still totally holds up because it it looks like television yep. it looks like cops it looks like that era of te- it looks like that era of television on yeah. Tatooine a domestic disturbance between <laughs> uh brew yeah, Owen. Uncle Owen. Yeah. I, I just if if you haven't oh my gosh the, all, all of these if you yeah. haven't um Darth Maul apprentice definitely but Absolutely. that that one uh was a social media darling the week yeah. it came out um Hardware Wars of course Troops Chad yeah. Vader Thumb Wars Rebel Scum Pink 5 I found interesting I found it annoying it Interesting in the way, like okay, yeah. here's a way. Here's a way to put this sort of character in it. Yeah. When I saw at the end of it that it was a series, I went, I think we need. We said all that we needed, <laughs> I think we said needed right, to with, right. a, with the first episode. See, I don't want to see a tw- you know like in essence a, what, a probably an eighteen year old, nineteen year old girl talking about her head and nails and stuff and like that. Boys, it, it, and boys. It, while she's that right. smuggler called me again. It, it was like oh, I, I don't know. Prize. I guess I know who this is for, but it's not for a majority of us fans. I don't think so. Yeah. It's cool. But George Lucas in Love is one that we need Lucas to talk Love about because that's so well done, man. Is beautifully shot, beautifully yeah. written. Yeah. It's got fun nods to the entire Star Wars universe in it. Yep. It's not it it's a Star Wars fan film, but yes. it's like a mockumentary. Yeah. It it's well, it, it took me for a ride, dude. Um, it's about young George Lucas yep. at USC mm-hmm. writing Star Wars for his final project. Right, he can't. He, he's at, he's at a, he's got a writer's block, and he can't figure out what to write about. It's about space farmers. Yeah. It's about a young space farmer and, and his crop um, uh, space corn. Uh, <laughs> I, space. Uh, that was probably my favorite bit. That was just pure like, where's yeah. the slapstick? It, it, it was just uh, space. Uh, he was just trying to figure out space vegetables. Yeah. And what's great is those of us who who are so uh, you know who enjoy the the original trilogy so much, they do great jobs of a nod to every single one of the characters that we're going to see in the film, uh, in natural ways that you might actually see them on a college campus and might actually be influenced by them on a college campus. And it's not overt. That's what's so great about it. It's done so deftly. The fact that it was based on Shakespeare in Love is so brilliant as a template because uh, it had just come out Shakespeare in Love. And that you, didn't you know? it, that didn't hit me until the montage. So yes. went, no, of course it's Shakespeare in Love. <laughs> uh, it it was it was fun, great performances and great ending. Holy amazing Mac- ending. Amazing ending and the ending and the scene in the credits. And the also brilliant. And, and it was ahead of its time. It, it had was a post credit scene. Yep. And featuring it that and that <laughs> sort of came back around 15 years later. Right. Weird. He, um, he meets a girl who inspires him to to write what he knows and what he knows is Star Wars. And so and then you have the great button at the end of what happens between him and the girl, which is great. Yeah. All all inspired by <laughs> Star Wars. Um, uh, imps, we already talked about Imps. And yes. I, I just wanted to touch upon it because we, we didn't hit any of the big lore ones. There's a, a big release okay. last year called Revan. Yeah. It's about Darth Revan. It's an hour and a half. Hour and a half. It's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's an amazing effort. It's an amazing labor of love. Uh... And and they had hundreds of people working mm-hmm. on it. Um, it th- this is a, a place where I would love for Star Wars to step in and go. Well, here let let us help you with that. Yeah. If you if let's get you the official Star Wars stamp of approval, so we can have this exist mm-hmm. and it can be associated with the Star Wars brand and not be sort of damaging because ever since Disney has taken over, they've been. All about the fan films, mm-hmm. like it's they they've gotten out of just the parody and documentary part, yeah. um, special effects. Um, I before I super looked into it, mm-hmm. I, I added in a uh, a question saying, "Hey, do you think they should offer official assets?" And little did I know, for 2016, they offered a sound and music package for anybody entering. So when you wow. when you uh, put in the the entry, I, I, and I, I didn't look into it too much because mm-hmm. it's already over. Uh, when you uh, you announce your entry or when you establish entry, they're like, "Okay, here's a package. Here's an officially licensed Star Wars music and sound effects package." Wow, because. A lot of these, and I and I say, uh, imps versus versus uh, Darth Maul apprentice. Yeah. Music and sound effects make everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because with imps, it, it made it look like they were making fun. Of it the the music 
reminded me more of like Crimson Tide yeah, yeah. or Hunt for Red October or, or yeah. uh, um, The Rock. It, it like hardcore action movies, and it's like, whoa, dude, chill. This is this is Star Wars. Let's yeah. let's hang out. Um, well, also, Mark, and this is what I, I, I want to say something just overall about these uh, fan films. Do it. This is what's amazing about the saga. What's amazing about Star Wars as a whole, right? There is no other property, no other franchise, no other saga, no other anything you want to call it that inspires people to create this level of fan film consistently through the decades, through generations. And I think that matters and that speaks to the wealth of knowledge and information in this property, in this saga, in this franchise, in the media, the the books that they can learn, the characters that are created, and the it sparks imagination. It sparks intelligence. It sparks uh, creativity of these people who create these things and because they love the property so much that's why these fan films are so amazing because they do it in in respect of the property they do it because they they want to put their best foot forward you know and I, who knows how much time they take creating these but I, when they come out most of the times they're really well done and really really uh, really capture the spirit of the, of the of the property you can tell the 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 people who sacrifice their jobs because yes. there was something about sitting in that movie theater and feeling the wonder mm-hmm. that anything is possible. Yeah. There's very, I, I agree with you, there are very few properties right now, yeah. uh, and just in general, that have the idea, the, the sense of wonder, other than just the space program, yeah. Yeah. other than just yeah. NASA, Star. I, and I think they work hand in hand, mm-hmm. where we have this fantasy of the stars, and the reality of the stars, Star Trek maybe, I guess, but that's, I, I, and I love me some Star Wars, yeah. or Star Trek, but that's a little bit too facty, whereas this is, I can I can be a bounty hunter. I yeah. can be a princess. I can be whatever. Yeah. Like, and I. One of the things that that I wanted to bring up with this is I think they should there should be a an opportunity for fan films to earn their way into the canon. Wow. One hundred percent. Interesting. I, because Darth Maul Apprentice, whether or not that's quote unquote yeah. canon. Yeah. People are going to see that, and now they're going to associate with that with the character. Yeah. Next time, when they see Darth Maul appear in Episode One, they went, "Well, he just came out of hiding. Yeah. This is his first mission as the uh, as the official apprentice of Darth Sidious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, no matter what, moving forward now, head cannon is a thing. Yeah. Like on the show a couple of months ago, I talked about how. The I, I have a I have accepted a headcanon where the first order had midichlorian inhibitors to all of their the the kids that they stole to join the military. Interesting. Just as a precaution. Yeah. Because Emperor was like, whatever, I'm I got it. I have the most midichlorians and I got this dude. Right. We're fine, don't worry about this. Cause then that's a way where despite those inhibitors, Finn can Finn overcame that, yeah, and then midichlorians don't matter anymore. Right, like you can you you utilize what you have and make fans need to accept it. Yeah, it was a thing that happened. Whatever, we didn't like it, but if you utilize it in the right way, it it can it can be something great. So now that's yeah. that's a hit cannon that I accept moving forward, and Darth Maul Apprentice is something that I accept yeah. moving forward. Well, this is a great point you make, Mark. No, because one thing to think about midichlorians, if you have the inhibitors, if a power wants to get out, it will adapt and improvise exactly. and get out in different ways. And we talked about this last week with, well, do we want Jedi or Sith, or do we want another? Is there, is there, Are they done, and is there another Force user coming, another name for them? And so that's certainly a possibility. If you have midichlorian inhibitors, okay, you, it's like you're treating it like a disease, but the disease will adapt and improvise and find its way to an, another way of, of, of coming out. And exactly. so it's certainly possible. Yeah, that's a great idea. So with head cannons like that yeah. they need to get they, sh- they should be able to get ahead of that yeah so now if it's a story that they're going to tell so if Revan is a story that they want to tell right then that's one way of going okay we appreciate all of the work that you did for this right maybe we'll call some of you and get you involved in the process right. but unfortunately we can't consider that yeah but where I mean Troops we can't accept as canon because it's, it's a domestic <laughs> I, dispute. I accept it as canon. I think it's amazing. <laughs> Fair no, but, play. But it, because like all we ever know is we just hear from happenstance that the Imperials, but we don't know. We weren't there. There's mm-hmm. no shot of the Imperials actually blowing up Owen and Baru from what I remember. So 
Yeah, they could have it. <laughs> I mean, anything's in play. But I mean, but listen, if you haven't seen Troops, it's a cops. It's a cops thing. It's so great. If you ever see Chad Vader, you gotta give Chad Vader. That's multiple episodes on YouTube. He, it's Chad Vader's Darth's brother, and he's a nighttime or daytime manager at a grocery store. Day then night. Day then night. Manager. Yeah, when he gets demoted to night shift because of Kevin. Uh, Kevin. And 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 it's so great those little things that they have there, and the 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 plot lines are only it's you know they're only five minutes long or something like that, and you enjoy the characters. And that's what's so great. They're so rich, these fan films with characters. My only problem with, with uh, Darth Maul one was that I thought the Jedi putting his apprentice in danger is not something a Jedi would do. I, I agree. I that didn't was like the, the only, master in yeah, that. That was the that only w- problem I had. That, but that era of, I mean, we have many problems yes, with that era true. of, Je- of oh, the Jedi Oh, that's a good Order. point. It's a very so good point, Mark. That, okay. that goes on right. to it. Um, do you think that fan films, and, and we've been talking a lot about the, the comedic ones, yeah. do you think that they poke too much fun at the source material and it undercuts the the seriousness that that they're trying that this world is trying to convey. I think that depends on your personal take. Like if you're the kind of person who doesn't like their stuff being made fun of, then you can be upset about it, right? But I think most of us understand that this entire saga always seems to have that wink just around the corner. And so, uh, no matter what scenes we're watching, no matter what film we're watching, we can tell this because Han is that way. Han is a walking wink and grin. You know, a little smirk mm-hmm. grin. Han is that, and when we get into when we get into the prequels, you have a little bit of that with uh, Obi Wan, a little bit of that with Anakin in certain moments, especially when he's trying to court uh, Padme, and you have a little bit with Obi Wan when he's trying to teach Anakin in certain moments. Mm-hmm. So there's always this little kind of thing, and in the and obviously in the Force Awakens, uh, Ray has a little bit of that, and Finn has a little bit of that, and even po. even Poe, yeah, Poe too. And so I mean, the first line of the movie there. is. All right, so who talks first? Why yeah, talk first? yeah, that's what I'm I mean, saying. That's instantly, all right, yeah. okay, there's some space fun to be yeah. had. And so I think the fan films, if they're done correctly, like like akin to the Lego stuff we're talking about, they do a nice job of bringing a little bit of the humor but making it work with it and respectful of the property. Not making it a joke like Hardware Wars, where it's just straight up parody. Yeah, yeah. Or th- and, and Thumb Wars, which is also straight up parody. Right. And and can get a little bit childish at times, but when right. you're doing a, a movie where everybody's a thumb, you know, it, yeah. it gets, <laughs> what do you expect? It gets a little play. It gets a little bit too crazy. Right. But then we start getting into the difference between Battlestar Galactica and Spaceballs. Yeah. You know. Yep. So that. That takes fan film to a different <laughs> thing, you know. That, yeah. Let's put Star Wars on TV. Let's let's make Star Wars just a straight up comedy. Yeah, yeah. And I, actually, I would be interested to hear how much Hardware Wars inspired Spaceballs. That'd be interesting. Oh yeah. Uh, right? Mel Brooks will we'll call you. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, I'll call you after He's the show. By the he, phone, he watches. Yeah. So yeah, no, I'll, I'll call you right after. We'll, we'll get you on air next week. Um, so with the droid builders, as we mentioned, getting. Yeah picked up for the force awakens what services could the fan could lucas the lucas film excuse me yeah. draw the, upon the fans for well to me i think at this point as i've been saying multiple times already on this on the show is that a network has to come into play at some point and when the network comes into play that's when these people i think can really be hired and to work on stuff and to have the the full toolbox mm. from which to work with and create the stuff that they want to create i mean they're already creating series already god knows how much those things cost time getting actors to come do it consistently shooting at night in grocery like all these kinds of location shoots and and there's money involved yeah. and so if they're able to do this already without money from Lucasfilm from Disney. Imagine what they can do with a full uh, toolkit and um, a little bit of more money that's going in and a little higher end producers, a little higher end location scouts. Little high, so all that stuff is possible. So that's what I would say. I think it's it's it's, it's certainly and then once the network launches, I think they can definitely be used. Or if they want to do little one offs, they I, can certainly be looked at. I just like how it went from I would really like a network to so once it launches. <laughs> I just, I, yeah, they we're say tracking you, it at about <laughs> mid 2017. Yeah, that's right. When it launches, they say you got to speak stuff into the air to make it happen into the universe. So I'm trying to speak the network into the universe. Yeah, Ackman, I, <laughs> yeah. But they can certainly use them for little one-offs and things of that nature that that you can add to films as like little behind-the-scenes featurettes or uh, as just little things that, that can be officially approved by Lucasfilm on Blu-ray releases, special edition Blu-ray releases. Mm-hmm. Why not? Like the Coulson shorts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Agent Coulson shorts. Yeah, exactly. Those are a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we do have some folks in chat mentioning the oh. Family Guy. Yes. Uh, which... 
The first one I enjoyed, they yeah. started to kind of fall off for me personally. We just talk about Family Guy as a series as well. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. But the uh, the robot chicken. Oh, off the charts. Hands down. See, but I don't even consider those fan films. No, those I are don't. those are like you know separate things that they're doing because they're not. They are fans, but they're not like it's not Seth MacFarlane. Did you, you know? did you know that the the robot chicken Star Wars almost led to a series by the same people, an Ugh. officially licensed Star Wars series by Seth Green, by um, Matthew Seinreich. Oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah, it just never got off the ground, yeah. but that was still under Lucas, so... Yeah, but still, once again, the jokes are funny, hmm? the jokes make sense in where they... But they don't... They poke fun, but they don't destroy, and that's the difference. Like, you could, you could do a real, like, making comments about the script or comments about the character development that's mean or that's like trying to destroy the property mm. and that doesn't wash because people love it so much so the robot chicken leans into the jokes about it but still it's fun to see the characters come to life in this in these comical ways it's you know? a giant what if yeah because we get what if what if jar jar learned how to become a force ghost? <laughs> exactly what happened if uh Qui-Gon dropped his lightsaber because it would have melted through the exactly. entirety of the Trade Federation <laughs> ship. Um, and and every once in a while, not every time, but com coming off of uh, Star Tours when they're playing the Imperial March, here we are, we're the Empire on ice. Uh, you can't can't help it. That's super, super good. Absolutely. Man. Um, so ultimately, we... we we're here to thank the folks Absolutely. who have gone out of their way to make this additional entertainment for the world. Yeah. And the folks who will continue to do so because if if Rebel Scum and Darth Maul Apprentice are any indicator of the new level that we're going to be receiving from yeah. this uh from this new world of Star Wars, we're in for some good stuff. I want to throw something out there. Do it. Scott Mance uh the other day Hey man. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to make because I saw. For, so for, on movie fights the other day, he yeah. was he wore a Bespin shirt. He wore a Bespin shirt He's on a purpose. Monster. He is a monster. But I don't. I don't want this to be an okay show, man. And guess what he man. gave me? A Bespin shirt <laughs> as a gift the other day, which I posted on my Instagram and my Twitter. But what's what? One of the things doing this research for this family. The reason I'm bringing it up. I've actually, it's I've, the mistake might actually be something really positive for me, because I started to read more about this Bespin and be more re and now doing the fan film. I'm like, I might want to write a fan film about Bespin. You know what? What an interesting way to turn it around. You know, so I'm getting a little inspired. So, so here's here's something fun. Is um, we just started a new series on uh, Popcorn Talk. Oh, okay. that's we're we're starting to look into how how easy it really is to, these days to make. Uh, inexpensive but high quality film. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Why not? Let's put let's put the All Jedi right. Alliance stamp. I'm down on it, dude. I'm super down. Okay, let's see what we can do. Let's do it. You heard it here first. We're going to be entering the 2017 <laughs> fan film contest. Um, so I, my final word on this is I I think that it would behoove Disney with how much support they're putting into this entire fan film contest. Yeah. Use it as a farm league. That's a great idea. Use it as a developmental. Yeah. What can we? Excuse me. Oh goodness. There you what, go. Uh, uh, what talents do we want to foster? Yeah. Be, uh, when we talked about the Blu-ray features, we saw the families. We yeah. saw the the parents who were working on the original trilogy now working with their sons and daughters yeah. doing the same thing, and now harboring this huge new generational upkeep. Yeah. That. That the fan films can do, I I see nothing but good things. It's almost like Project Greenlight. It'd almost be like perfect. Project Greenlight. Yeah. Almost like NXT if you're yeah. a wrestling fan. There we go. Um, so, <laughs> yes, let us know what you think about what is your favorite Star Wars fan film. Let us know in the comments down below or on iTunes. We are on iTunes. We are on YouTube. I hope you two families can meet one day. Hey, we'll have a wonderful party. Um, we go from there to our new favorite segment, which is Mind Probe. That's where you, that is good, that's where you go to Facebook. We are on Facebook at Jedi Alliance, you leave us a like, we post up a notice for asking for questions, and you leave us those questions, and we talk about them a little bit right here on the show. So our first question comes from Kevin Kane. Should there be an Anakin standalone movie? The Redemption of Hayden. Yes. 
I would love for there to be as well. Yeah. Right? All right, cool. Nice question. Yeah, no, that's but... right. <laughs> even, uh, even like what we talked about, like maybe something as a 15, 20 minute film added on to a added on to a uh, um, a special added on to the special features of a, of a special edition of one of the films. If not that, then absolutely a whole film about him. Why not? We're talking Star Wars stories. We're doing Rogue One. There's Clone no Wars. reason we can't go back and do an Anakin, give Hayden one more shot at it to redeem himself uh, with the lessons and what have you that we learned from Clone Wars and all that jazz, and maybe bring Ahsoka into it. That would be awesome. Hayden, how you doing? <laughs> uh, absolutely. I heard it. Um, I, would, I think uh, there's plenty of room for this. I mean, we got to fill a network here, people. Yeah, I mean, it's a network. It's, it's a network. Um, if, if we get a live-action uh, Clone Wars series or Clone Wars uh, movie. Just, he's a good actor. We all know he's a good actor. Right. So let's give him another chance. I think, I think so. he deserves it. Yeah. Patrick Barman asks, do you think we will see the destruction of the Falcon? Or does that cross the line? It's, <laughs> we lost one, man. We can't lose the other, all right? Come on. Patrick, we just brought it back. Seriously. I mean, you don't want to kill it. Also, that's more of a Star Trek move, isn't it? To destroy yeah. their Enterprise all the time. Yeah, the Millennium so, Falcon B. The Millennium Falcon yeah. D. Like, no, no, there's one. There's only one Millennium Falcon. There's only one bucket of bolts. <laughs> yeah, no that's, no. that's crossing the line. That's right. No. Get out of here. All right. Uh, Corey Cor Donaldson asks. But thank you for the question. Much appreciated. <laughs> Corey Donaldson asks, with the idea of an expo exploration... To ex what? Exploration, Okay. Yeah. And would the idea of an exploration-type storyline set in the Star Wars universe interest any Jedi Alliance hosts, Jedi Alliance hosts and guest hosts? We're some of those people. Yeah, I think we are. The reason I'm asking this question is because despite all the wars in the Star Wars universe, I always wondered if a group of explorers went off exploring the unknown parts of the galaxy or even other galaxies. So if it's like a five-year mission sure. um, mm. to boldly go mm. uh, where no yeah. ship has gone before. I feel like I've heard that somewhere before. I don't before. know. It sounds weird. <laughs> Just roll with me on this. I would like that a lot, actually. I would absolutely be down with this. Mm. Once again, has to be kin, and once again, a network show. It's absolutely a network Star Wars network show. You go and you create, it could be 10, 15 episodes. But I mean, like you see this, they do this is what Star Trek does well. You know, not to they do their little TV shows. Mm -hmm. Star Wars doesn't get a chance to do TV shows. They do their it's, little TV shows. Yeah, and, you know, and Star Wars should. I think certainly exploring the different planets, the different. Uh, I just I find the Star Wars universe a, a little more richer in terms of planets and alien races and types that you encounter uh, a little more richer than the Star Trek universe. So I would say that there's so much to, to explore. I could actually, I think you can break it down super simply. So the thing about Star Trek is it's all about what. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. What are we going to find? Uh, whereas Star Wars seems to be more about why. Yep. And and that's a little bit more of a deeper question. I agree. So I, I would love to see that. Like what we're getting on Rebels, but let's start to move into different parts of time yeah. and, and get an awesome series. Um, love this name from Crafty Radford. Uh, <laughs> would you like to see Dave Filoni direct a live action Star Wars movie? If so, what do you think he would bring to it? Yes and all of it. Yeah. Boom. I don't know what more you need. Yes is the answer. Uh, because we saw what Brad Bird could do with the Mission Impossible series coming off The Incredibles. Yeah. So why can't why wouldn't Filoni have the same kind of ability uh, with the amount of experience he's already had to see what he can do with a live action Star Wars? I mean, obviously you'd have the full support of the Disney team, JJ as well, I imagine, and everybody involved in it, Kathleen as well, and all that. So he would have all the resources he could possibly need to create a live action Star Wars film. And if someone this knee deep into the property and the saga should be allowed to direct one, I think. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also seeing a changing of what makes a property movie. We're seeing transmedia properties. Mm -hmm. uh, Ratchet and Clank just came out this weekend, yep. and they kept the main cast from the video game. Wow. They kept the main voice actor, so James Arnold Taylor as mm -hmm. Ratchet. Um, as an example, friend of the show. Hi, James. Um, so with that, you can have a full-on Star Wars Rebels movie yeah. with the cast from the show. Yep. Make it live action. Just put them in the makeup. Yeah. Why not? Right. Most, of, most of it is makeup anyway. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't see why not. Filoni is a mastermind with this stuff. And I think he'd bring the right mix of, of 
uh, humor and darkness. Totally. Which he's done already on Rebels, as we've seen over the last two seasons, and we're going to see really deeply in the third. It'll so, be yeah. interesting to see how dark we, in fact, do go. Yeah. Uh, so from here, uh, thank you for sending us your questions. Make sure to go to our Facebook page, at Jedi Alliance, and you can leave us questions to be answered on the Mind Probe. <laughs> from here, we go to Duel of the Fates. Uh, it's beautiful. I love this track. We need another usage of this track. I agree. Like, ooh, could you imagine if episode nine we finally get the full powered fight between Ray and Kylo Ren, oh my and all of a sudden you just hear, uh, oh. just on a walkway, on a walkway, yes. on a big walk walkway over a giant crevasse. Yes, why not? <laughs> uh, love this track. Uh, so last week's question: Understanding that there will be no Jedi in Rogue One, and given that neither Kanan nor Ezra is a full Jedi. Which we were corrected on. Yes, we were. Uh, do you think we need to move on from Jedi in the trilogy movies and create a next level spiritual resistance or rebel warrior? Um, pretty even. Yeah, it was almost, 50, almost 50 50. I mean, that shows how good of a topic it was. Yeah, thank so you. So cheers to you. Thank you. Uh, Ashley Brooks writes Are you kidding? <laughs> the Jedi have to stay. You can have some other Force sensitive people that perhaps even have a different philosophy about the Force, but you can't face out the Jedi or it won't be Star Wars. It doesn't mean that you can't have some stories without them, but geez, we need the Jedi in our lives. By the way, that's my favorite response. Ash, of all yeah. the responses we, we read and got, Ashley is so adamant about it. I love they, it. The Jedi, they have to stay. <laughs> uh, Shane O'Neill writes, Jedi and Sith will always be around. Though I do think we will see a third faction arise as kind of a middle ground between the two who embrace more emotions but are wary of them as well. That's absolutely. a good, I think that's a good note. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's always that gray area. It seems to be leaning that, going in that direction anyway. So that's why it inspired me to write the, to write this question because I, I think it's going that way anyway. I mean, we're getting it with both Ahsoka and Maul yeah. now. Yeah. So we're seeing gray from both sides. Yeah, and in the in the books as well. Oh, God. Let's not talk about the books. <laughs> um, that's a completely <laughs> different animal. That's Jesper true. Elwes writes, I think the Jedi had their day. Time for some new kids on the block hey with exciting new force powers and light axes instead of lightsabers and probably a groovy tune or two. What? That was me. That <laughs> wasn't him. I was going to say. Sorry, he said new kids on the block. Light axes? I mean, you get a heavier weapon. <laughs> like we saw... Oh, oh. <laughs> it's oh, interesting to just me. got a little bit more attractive in here. Uh, in the Darth Maul Apprentice uh, short, we saw one of the masters use yes. a heavier style. So yeah. one would think that he would have a, a heavier... Uh, what if he had a thicker crystal, which yeah. created a, a heavier blade? Um, I like this. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, Jessica Beardsley. I think that we have already seen different types of Force users. In the Clone Wars, uh, there was the episodes in Season 6 with uh, Mace Windu and Jar Jar yep. and Bardada. The race of people were connected to the Force in a different way than the Jedi or the Sith. Maz Kanata also talks about knowing the Force. The door is open! Bring it on! There you I, go. I mean, we we're seeing that with, with those characters. We're seeing with Finn. Yeah. Uh, anybody... The, the force seems to just be like knocking on people's doors like, hey, who's up for a party? And and it's just going to be a huge block party that the force is holding and everybody can can uh, hang out and take in the party however they want. It seems like if the First Order can adapt, then logically to bring balance to the universe, the Jedis and the Rebellion and the Resistance must also adapt and change and whatever. So it's, it's like as... as as your opponent adapts and improvises, for you to stay ahead or be able to count it, you have to be able to understand how to adapt and improvise within your own uh, technique, within your own force as well. And I think it certainly is here. I, I think it's also uh, the case of the Jedi not being as taboo yeah. as they were when the Empire was in right. straight order. Because right. you would hear that and go, oh, that's that's just some hokey religion. But there's probably a bunch of people. Yeah. A bunch of people just like, no, Jedi were real. They yeah. saved my planet. So now it's just like, yeah, Jedi, cool, awesome. So now more people have an idea that the Force was a thing. Yes. And more people are open to it. Yeah. So Agreed. It, it has that opportunity to change. I want to read this last one, can Please I? Because I included it for a reason. Daniel Gonsalves says, any kind of order is on a countdown to demise. As I see it, the purest of the Jedi would be anarchists. This is a very bold statement. Would love to see Ahsoka becoming a symbol of what Force users should aim for. Can you imagine, in Episode Eight, Luke saying something like, Have you ever heard of Ahsoka the expelled Jedi? She was my father's apprentice. Eleven out of ten would cry like a baby. Like this if you cry every time. <laughs> It's, it's it's a brilliant idea. It's pretty great. I wanted to give him a shout out because that's such a brilliant idea, and mm -hmm. it would be so amazing out of left field. You'd have nerdgasms all over the theater the second Luke said Ahsoka Tano. Uh, I'm uh, in the second he said it. Uh, People <laughs> like, go insane. The the 
I could just imagine <laughs> like every like half of the theater reacting, yeah, and maybe one or two people going like, "What?" Like <laughs> just super freak out, just shouting pure emotion, escaping their body. Um, yeah, yeah, that. That's an, a wonderful idea. I like the idea of Jedi as anarchists. Buy gold, buy yeah. um, anything to keep that going. But here we go, man. This week hey, on we'll... Duel of the Fates, if you were going to be making a fan film from The Force Awakens, and we're going to give you a choice here because there's way too many. Every, we know the, the, the basic answers. Yes. We, I mean, you, everybody wants to see more Ray. Everybody wants to see more Finn. Everybody wants to see more Paul and Kylo Ray. <laughs> but. And this is a big but. This is a big but. Uh. Would you do a Maz Kanata film or a Captain Phasma fan film? Both characters that could have used more screen time and both that everybody wanted to see a lot yes. more of. Uh, bonus points if you give us a little bit of that plot. Yeah. We're going to read your answers next week. Absolutely. The best ones get read. So, like, work it, work on it and Dude. give us something really good and uh, you'll get this reaction. Yeah, that means I'm happy. For our audio listeners, that oh, means yes. tune in to YouTube. <laughs> Go to YouTube, uh, do you 50 minute mark, see see some of that magic. See my eyebrows dancing. See some of that magic. Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh, that was, a, that was a thick episode and we just sped through it. That was pretty magical. What What's your What's your answer? Oh, my answer? Do, oh, do we do this on, or do we have to answer um, next week? No, let's do this okay. week. Let's do this week. You gotta give people a, I mean, I, if it's a film, yeah, I have to say Captain Phasma because okay. I I would love Maz Kanata to be a series oh. where you where it's like hey I remember this one time five hundred years ago this one time eight hundred years yeah. ago this one time whatever because there is such a wealth there mm -hmm. but I want to see I want to see the uh, the the GI Jane I want to see the the military the military film that made yeah. what what made Captain Phasma want this order in her life yeah. and maintain this order in her life. And, and and also I just we've been watching a lot of military esque movies on uh, action movie anatomy, oh. so I'm just kind of in that wheelhouse. But uh, yeah, and and because since her armor is based off of a Naboo, a Naboo cruiser, yeah, does that take us back to Naboo? Is she does she try to join the security force, but right. realizes how terribly run it is and yeah. decides to join the Empire or the First Order? Is she mm. a remnant of the Empire? What's her deal? Yeah. I had a weird idea the other day that yep. she might be the daughter of uh, Princess Leia's companion in the comic book. I just had a weird idea the other day. And I was like, Naboo? Hmm. Interesting. So it just you kind of... silence. silenced me. It just, Yeah, well, it just kind of all hit me. And wow. I was like, well, she's blonde, she's blonde. It would. We might work. Did it, you hear the a granddaughter the or something? The other theory yeah. that she's the little girl from the Ewok movie? Yes, I saw that. That was great. <laughs> what so, a great compare, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's great comparison. Mind-blowing. So that's the thing is, we, we have all of these yeah. ideas about this character, and I want to see, I want to see them all. Yeah. Try them out. We'll see you in 2017 for the fan film. Well, what about Booyah. Uh, um, what about Maz you? Kanata is mine, and I would do Maz Kanata as a late night at the bar, talking uh, to one of her bartenders. I thought you were going to say like a late night talk show. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> uh, who do we have coming down? The, like, who do we have she's coming She's got the down? band. I'm sure she'd have the band the Why whole not? night. The Maz Kanata talk show. Oh, my God. Somebody do fan art of the Maz Kanata talk show, please, <laughs> and post it on Jedi Alliance Send Facebook. That would be awesome. Uh, but, no, I think Maz Kanata would be like a late night thing, five-minute film where she tells a story about one of, the, uh, one of the trilogy characters, maybe even someone from the prequel trilogies that could really work to kind of slowly bring it back. And then, like, she's just telling the bartender about something because she has some kind of... Uh, uh, like relic, a bobble. So, yeah, a bobble or something from that time, and the bartender goes, "You know what is that? I've noticed you talk about what is that." And then the story. That, that's what I. Th that's yeah. what I like about Maz is is that idea of anything can happen with yep. her. Yep. She could have seen anything and everything. Yeah, could have been a neighboring system when the Death Star blew up. Yep, uh, and just. She could. I mean, who knows? She might have done something on Geonosis and yep. seen that entire massacre. Sure. Like, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. It's, either way, I'm interested in both of these stories. Yeah, me we too. Know I liked your What Facebook. you're interested in, let us know. On we're going to post this tomorrow. So uh, make sure to go to our Facebook page at Jedi Alliance. Uh, like us on Facebook. Like us on Twitter. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit more on that in just a second. But uh, John, fortunately, we're at the end of our journey. Yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> it was I, fun. I guess. We had a good time. We did. This, uh, this is getting increasingly fun. Yes. We're just getting sillier and sillier. Oh, uh, well, that's fine because we're enjoying the saga. Damn right we are. 
I know. Yeah. I'm no stand-up, but I do all right. Uh, you're fantastic. Thank let, you, Mark. Let the folks know what, what you're up to and where they can find you. Oh, yeah, you. you guys can always find me at The Roca Says, R-O-C-H-A. Uh, you can see the shows I'm hosting and the shows I am a guest on. And I always talk about stuff, and I always communicate with you. So if you follow me on Twitter, I do my damnedest at this stage in my career as I'm building to really be in contact with the fans and talk back and discuss things. So trust me, your follow of me is not a wasted follow. We will communicate. And you you talk about so much on the nerd spectrum yeah and i mean we we talked about a lot on the nerd spectrum yep. here and i i saw a, a dog fan art of john snow on yes the, so yeah get you your game of thrones your harry yep. potter your all that biz I'm all um, the place. unfortunately i'm here too much and i don't and i don't uh, get out <laughs> very often um so uh star i'm I, i'm a big nerd i, I like the, the marvel stuff i like the dc stuff mm-hmm. if you want to uh, civil wars coming out this week yeah. so that's that's going to be something Woo-hoo! that everybody's going to be talking about so uh follow me on twitter at mark b donica um uh, a lot of our wrestling programs i mentioned uh james arnold taylor he's actually going to be here later tonight 6 p.m we're going to be talking about Ratchet and Clank yeah. on video game movie anatomy. Awesome. Uh, love me some James Arnold Taylor. Yeah. He's a wonderful human being. Um, so make sure to check that out. We're going to be live 6 p.m. right here on the Popcorn Talk Network. But thank you for watching and or listening to Jedi Alliance. You can visit popcorntalknetwork.com to find a nice list of all the past episodes of Jedi Alliance and links to both YouTube and iTunes. Please also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Jedi Alliance for all of the us-related news. This has been Jedi Alliance on the Popcorn Talk Network. We talk movies. Thank you for listening because many Bothans died to bring us this information. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only, and not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.